I'm Atul Hanan with Harris County Flood Control District. Today, the topic of my presentation is Map Next Evolving Floodplain Mapping for Future. Map Next stands for Modeling, Assessment, and Awareness Project. Outline of my presentation. First, I'm going to talk about the Harris County Flood Control District. Then I'm going to talk about the reason why we did the study, preparations and methodology, communication, and at the end, the timeline of this project. We were created in 1937 after the big flood of 1929 and 1935. This is a picture of the downtown flooding condition during the time of 1929. So flooding is a new thing, is a not, not a new thing in Harris County. It's been happening for a long time. Little bit about what we do not do. Uh, so we do not regulate land development. We do not adopt flood insurance rate map. So we are not the floodplain administrator. We have 34 communities within Harris County who are the floodplain administrator. We do not have any jurisdiction over drainage for highways and street. So in the next, next picture, we are responsible for open channel, bayous and tributaries. Storm sewer system and roadside ditches are not within our jurisdiction. In Harris County, we have around 2,500 miles of channel. Around 1,200 of them are natural channel. The rest are all man-made. So this is the scale of our work. When we are talking about, let's do the study, you can see the scale of work. We have 144 panel, 1,800 square mile, 22 watershed. Uh, we have around roughly 1,200 miles of channel. Those are studied. So a lot of effort has been need to be given if we have to do the study. Another reason for flood control, we are so vested because our duty is to develop flood reduction projects. So we want to have accurate model and accurate mapping, and we are vested to know the best available risk information. If we have that, then we can actually serve our community with a better flood reduction projects. That's why we are so vested with modeling and work with FEMA to develop the flood insurance rate map and other risk products for this community. So why we flood? This area is prone to severe rainfall due to tropical storm and hurricane. Plus, the topography of this area is flat and the soil type, it's impermeable clay soil. And you can see a statement from 19, 1836 that this area actually is subject to flood because of all those reasons. Here you can see um, the number of structures within Harris County. We have around 1.6 million structures within Harris County. Out of that, 62% were built before 1989. So I'm gonna talk about um, that 89 scale. So if we look about all the regulation and everything that were there when the 62% developed, the level of service of the infrastructure is less than five years. That's why when we have intense rainfall, those areas get flooded before water comes to the bayou. So just to sum up, more than 60% of the area within Harris County was developed before 1989. And during that time, around 2.5 million people were living. 
now we have around close to five and five and a half million people living within Harris County. And many homes and businesses were built prior to the delineation of floodplain maps. So they were built without understanding the proper risk. So during Harvey, and this always happens and people say, well, look, the map is wrong. So all the things that I talked about, in Harvey, around 154,000 structures were flooded. If you look at it, uh, around more than 60% of the structures outside of the floodplain got started. Why? Actually, the map is not only wrong. As I say, out of the 2,500 miles, 1,200 of the miles are studied. The rest are not because for study, there are some limitation, FEMA goes on standard. All the itty bitty small channel cannot be mapped. So because of that limitation, risk is not mapped in every channel. So that's number one. Number two, I talked about the infrastructure. Um, the level of service is less than 5%, a five, a five year level of service. So when it intense rainfall happen, before water comes to the bayou, those homes are flooded and 60% or more had been built with that condition. So because of all this reason in our area, when any kind of event happens, we can see many of the flooding is happening outside of the floodplain. The map is not wrong. Actually, the map doesn't show all risk. So anywhere in the United States, when a flood insurance map study is going on, normally two kinds of things is mapped on the flood insurance rate map. One is the riverine flooding, and another one is the coastal flooding. So as I said, this does not cover all the risk in Harris County, because we have other kind of flooding, which we will describe at the bottom. So because of the infrastructure insufficiency, because of the flood training, because of the heavy intense rain, if we want to know all the risk, other type of things should be mapped like shallow flooding, overland, which is called kind of like urban flooding, sheet flow. If those risks are not mapped, then we are not having a good picture of risk. Now, uh, I'll come back to that statement, what I just made. Now, a little bit about why we started this study. From 19, uh, 2015, 2016, 2018, 17, we had many events in Harris County because of consecutive intense and, and big events started happening. There was a need to look at the real risk in this area. So that was number one, because of so many events happening within a few years, we thought that a new study needs to be looked at if there is a big shift in hydrology. Another thing was, as we were looking at the events, experience the events that were happening, there was a study going on with NOAA to update the Texas state rainfall. So they were looking at it. The timeline was just after finishing the study was just after what we experienced was Harvey. So once we faced the Harvey event, we requested NOAA to include Harvey. So we have a good picture of rainfall in the state of Texas. So once they included Harvey, this is the picture you are looking at, the change that is happening in the state of Texas. So you can see the green area or greenish area where the changes are happening. Most of the rest of the state of Texas remain more or less the same. If you zoom in within our area, you can see the biggest change that had happened. That means this area becomes more colorful, that means the changes are big. So the outcome of the NOAA Atlas study showed 
the, normally we define certain amount of rainfall within 24 hours. We designate if this one happens, then this is 100 year, if this is 500 year. So if you look at our previous uh, that we were looking at, this was our before Harvey, um, the amount of rainfall. So if we had, we have three hydraulic region as you are seeing on the top, so if the rainfall for 24 hours are between 12 to 13.5, then we call it a 100-year event. If you look at Atlas 14 information, if you look at it, the three region for Atlas 14 is from 16 to 18. So there is more than 30% increase of rainfall within those three regions. So since the hydrology changed so much, that was the main reason we said, if hydrology is changing that much, obviously our understanding risk will change. And that was the trigger we did go for the study. So our last study was done after the tropical storm Allison, when we started that study around 2001, the study ended in 2007. So, we say that, okay, it's been more than 10 years. We looked at the modeling technology and it has changed a lot. And we were talking also about looking for other risk. So we thought that that was also another reason that we need to include as much as possible new technology to inform our area or various kind of risk. So previously we used to do steady 1D model. So we moved into 1D, 2D coupling, and also rain on grid. Also, we acquired LIDAR in 2018, so our topographic information is much better than the last time we did mapping with uh, the 2001 LIDAR. So the quality of topo has increased also a lot. Now going more into our map next. So our goal for map next is empower the county residents with flood risk information and education. Um, when the Tropical Storm Allison Recovery Project that we did, which I was involved, we found out that, you know, probably in terms of engineering, like the hydrology and hydraulic and mapping, uh, we are pretty solid on that. What we saw the biggest gap after the 15, 16, and 17, that people are not aware what that map really actually represents. Does it represent all risk? Is there anything that we didn't communicate well? So that's why what we decided that communication should be at the front, telling people how to read, what actually it shows, what this color shows. So we put it on the top so that we have a better understanding or our residents has a better understanding of the risk that we are going to present. And obviously lead the nation because the way we are approaching, as you will see more, that we went to one to two decoupling, we are going with rain on grid. So we are actually leading the nation because many of the things previously were not delivered the way we are doing. So as we will discuss, you will understand that we had to sit down with FEMA and hash out a lot of things and do a lot of um, early work in order to complete the study within the time limit. And then obviously we are looking for not only just the regular flood insurance rate map, but looking for other risks that will be represented on the map. You can see this is a joint project with FEMA and we are taking the majority workload uh, because we are a CTP, plus we do model management. We actually maintain our model and map. So most of the thing we took responsibility on our shoulder and only the post-product appeal and other post-preliminary products are being delivered by FEMA. So because of all this thing that we were talking about, new technology and so forth, so we started the preparation of MacNest. We started in January 2000, April uh, 2018, and we started working on the methodologies and procedure exploring 
and testing all this stuff. Uh, the reason the way we approached here is obviously many companies or consultants will be working for us, but we were developing all the methodology and procedure. And the reason is we want to be very transparent. So all over the Harris County, if we're using a methodology, that methodology will be done everywhere in the same way. So for example, if you put three engineers, you might get five answers because it's not wrong because there are so many flexibilities. Here, we said, no, what is the best approach for this kind of solution? And we kind of write this document, share with all the companies and say, is it the best way or there are others? If not, then all the companies does the same thing. So we came up like, okay, what are the challenges and the approaches as should be when we look at the challenges. So we looked at hydrology. Obviously, as I discussed, the hydrology has changed 30% as we discussed above. And also we were trying to include other risk as we talked about, uh, the ponding, the sheet flow, which also we can say urbanization of that area. So we were looking for urban flooding because as we said, more than 60% was developed before 1989. So we included the basin development factor in our hydrology to include the efficiency of those areas. Um, again, we talked about this would be an unsteady state model coupled 1D, 2D. So we work with FEMA to have all this exception so we can use those methodology and technology in order to map that area. When we are doing mapping with unsteady modeling, we all know that our normal way of delineating flood weight no longer uh, is possible. So we also work with FEMA on a methodology called velocity and depth factor. And we're gonna talk a little bit more. But also since we work very close with all other floodplain administrator, we also help developing the regulations for those communities. So a little bit about rain on grid. So what we are doing is for the 100 year excess rainfall, actually we are gonna drop on the topo. And this is what some of the example we're showing, we're dropping rain on grid on the surface and seeing how water goes to the bayou. So previously everywhere, when we see the floodplain map, Normally, the floodplain map shows how water is coming out of the bayou, but we never see how water is coming to the bayou. So this product will include not only how water is coming out of the bayou, but also how water is going to, go, going to the bayou, so which is the urban flooding we are looking for. So in order to capture the urban flooding, we actually included in our hydrology the basin development factor. If you see some of the features up here, it is looking age of pipes and channel and roadside ditches. So we are including those elements, channel improvement, channel lining, storm sewer, carbon gutter, so that we get a good reflection of the efficiency of that area. So if you look at this map, I mean, if you look at it, when you look at the map on your right side, the right extreme right picture, obviously the BDF is 12 because it's fully developed. But when you look at the other two, the four and the eight, the eight looks more greenish, but because of the efficiency, it's eight. But you know, if we don't use the BDF factor, maybe we would have reverse for the other two picture. So that is actually including efficiency of those infrastructure. So now a little bit about the floodway challenge that we have. Since um, we are doing floodway in an unsteady model, um, we were not able to do it uh, the way our normal process is. So again, this is the definition of a floodway. So a floodway is an area that FEMA tries to reserve. So if you take the 100 year flow within that reserve area, the maximum water surface could be 
up to one. So that area cannot go more than one foot and you also cannot have negative surcharge. So obviously in an unsteady model, when you change anything, your flow is changing. So uh, the previous method is not possible. So Todd and I actually back in 2013, we were doing a 1D, 2D modeling with uh, Soben and XP Swim, and we started testing how we can develop the flood wave. So at that time, we came up with an idea with depth velocity, and uh, this is not nothing new. There was a study done in Boulder, Colorado back in 1989. They were looking from the risk point of view, various like car, adult, children. And they were looking at that if your D into V is um, 3.8 or less, then, or if you go beyond that, then the risk factor is high. So the, the maximum you can go with the D into V products is 3.8. So what we did, we said, okay, if we want to look at the study and look at various risk for various um, entity, and, and if we want to be with the studies understanding within 3.8, we said, okay, let's see how the D to V product of 3.8 works. So we started drawing. So if you look at it, uh, the red line is our effective flood plane and, um, and the yellow is using the 3.8. Similarly, again, the red line is um, our effective flood way, and the yellow line is the, um, using the product number 3.8. And here also you can see most of the time it matched pretty well, except some area uh, because it's risk-based. So again, we have to understand that FEMA doesn't develop flood way with risk-based. We also test with various D into V, and uh, then we are looking at convents. So we cut various cross section at various places um, with our the, the width that we got from D into V, and we are looking at, okay, how much flow of Q is going within that area. We found out that more than 90% flow is going within that. So what FEMA wanted that the, 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 the Q that is in the multiple run should be within going within that flood way and the increase cannot be more than one. We also did modeling to look into. So we did some modeling. Um, so watershed, the whole watershed, because our approach is watershed, not just the channel. And we were looking at various D into V and we found out that 3.8 doesn't work for us. So if you go with D into V product 2.Y, that means wider. And then we map the whole watershed outside of it with the N numbers. And so if you look at it, the hatchet line is the effective. And then that the colorful line is the new floodway. So our new floodway in most of the places are bigger than effective. And then the color, you know, if you look at the depth, so if it is red or something, then it is more than one. I mean, here, I mean, we need to a little bit run. But if you look at the whole watershed, within the new flood wave that we developed, our surcharge is not more than one. So it is below one. So with that, we proved that, you know, this methodology that we are going to use in our 1D, 2D unsteady model, we were able to uh, run it less than one foot surcharge, but we are also a no rise community, so it doesn't matter to us because we are going to maintain the flood plane as our flood wave. And also, this study includes, as I said, other risk, like we are going to have the flood depth grid, percent and will change grid, and urban flooding would be reflected, and we are developing a dashboard. So it is not a justice just a flood insurance rate mark hard copy map, but we will have all other layers. And since we are, we maintain the models and the mapping, so we will keep that dashboard alive. So any changes happening, we will actually include. So the map, map next has two phases. As I said, we have 22 watershed. We started the first phase, 11 watershed, beginning of 2019. And recently we have started the second 11 watershed, which is phase two. 
We have a website if you want to know about MapNext. It pretty much explained very well. It's gonna talk about the various type of flooding and this is a timeline. So we started 2019 and uh, we would deliver everything end of 2021 to FEMA. And then we, these are some of the expected day that the map would follow. And that's how we are planning to do this uh, project. So with that, I would like to end uh, my presentation and thank you very much.